We're back for another episode of Jacket Sports Weekly right here on WCTV. We hope you had a wonderful spring bake, but we got to get back to the action. I'm Caleb Yager alongside Joe Venzel. We have a lot of sports topics to cover for Waynesburg University Athletics. And the men's and women's basketball seasons have wrapped up. First, we'll talk about the men's basketball team. They lost in the semifinal round of the PAC tournament to the eventual PAC champions in the W&J Presidents 66-61. But they had another chance. They got into the ECAC tournament uh, last Wednesday night, but they lost 55-45 to in that game against Juniata College. But Joe, just an impressive season all around. They finished 14 and 14 overall, 9 and 9 in conference play, but just kind of blew everybody's expectations away, and they had a solid season all around. Absolutely, and especially you know the send off of senior guard Matt Popek. You know we had called his the thousand point game up at St. Vincent College, and you know Matt Popek being a part of this team, creating the foundation around these guys. I feel like they had a lot of motivation to step up, you know, play against these PAC teams, stacked. PAC teams of that matter. You see Chatham, you see W&J to win the thing. And, you know, you look at this W&J game, 66 to 61, without Matt Popek and a lot of these guys stepping up, especially on the younger side, John, John Tastinger going to the line with 11 points, seven free throws in that. And John Kirkman, the graduate assistant, not a young guy, but still a veteran leader with 13 points and 10 rebounds of that respect. But you see a lot of future promise in this men's basketball team, especially, you know, playing at the ECAC tournament, you know, getting that shot, and they showed a lot of promise in that as well. Young team, but a lot of promise for sure, Mr. Venzel. And we're going over to women's basketball. They lost in the quarterfinals to the eventual champions, and guess who? W&J, 77-45. to um, They finished eighth in the conference, 6-20 and overall, 5-13 and in the conference play. Uh, but the thing is, with this women's basketball team, a, opposite from the men, the future is a little bit in question, Joe. Yeah, no, I'd say especially losing that piece of Brooke Fuller at the center point of your uh, of your team, especially another veteran, Casey Cashel, on the same aspect of that in, the se in her senior season. Her season cut short due to injury on that. But you got to fill that piece, Caleb, a very, very vital piece in that, you know, you have your young uh, stars you know, shining a little bit, Avery Robinson and Marley Wolf scoring the basket when they need to. But you really, really have to look and see what you need to project forward. Winter sports seasons are done, but spring fever. The spring sports seasons are here for Waynesburg University Athletics. And for the softball team, what an impressive run uh, over spring break down at the Fast Pitch Dream Spring Classic in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. They went 6-3, and three, could have gone 7-3, and three, but their first game got rained out. They were up 10-5 to five in the third inning against Castleton. But just by looking at the record alone, Joe, I mean, this team is showing some promise here early on. Yeah, you know, you see these games, like you said, 10-5, and five, you know, ended the third inning due to the weather. Couldn't see what else would have came out of that one. 18-1 to one in five innings as well, North Vermont, the game after that. You see a lot of promise, especially in beautiful Myrtle. You see come to cold Pennsylvania early on this spring. You know, you'll see this softball team has a lot of potential, especially at the pitching uh, pitching mound, mound pitching, obviously, with Kayla Gratton as well as a bunch of other players in that respect. But you see a lot of promise, Caleb, especially early on right now, and it's seeing a lot of promise in this future season. And a lot of promise in the, in the youth of this team as well. Sydney Wilson is a freshman on the team, pitched the most innings, and she pitched a shutout against Widener, one nothing, and she also pitched six innings, allowed two hits. It was a tough 4-3 loss against Grove City, um, but also Ella Brookman is going to be one of the biggest keys to this season. She had a 4.22 ERA last season, uh, but she can hit and pitch for this team. She had three hits uh, against, this, against Widener in that 7-6 victory. But moving over to baseball, it was a little different story. They uh, they ha they really struggled in the first two games, um, but they went two and four overall at the Russ Matt Invitational Winter, Winter Haven, Florida. Um, but overall, with the new head coach and Perry Cunningham, um, this season could go either way. But it's definitely looking at least better in terms of you know compared to last season for this. You know, first season head coach and Perry Cunningham being with this program for 14 years, and you look at these promising young talent, especially Nolan Vertulo as a freshman. Last year had a lot of promise at the bat, at the plate and in the field and showing what he can do down in Myrtle and you look at pitching as well. Joe Sabalek looking to be the ace of this team as well as Corey Fisher, Fisher I should say, uh, Fisher pitching in the win against Wartburg. And you see these pieces, Caleb, with this first-year coach. You, know, you see a lot of promise. But you look at the PAC and you see some stacked teams, especially with W&J coming off of a great year last year. But a lot of promise, a lot of young talent. I'm excited for this baseball season. 
And Joe Sabalek went one and one down in Florida, but also Corey Fisher really impressive as well. He got the win uh, against Concordia in that 10 to one blowout. And uh, he also got his first save of the season. Way to end the, the tournament on a high note against Wartburg, four to two victory. Um, and you mentioned this freshman, this freshman class, this young talent that this team has. For example, Nolan Vertulo is, you know, he played basically, I was down there with Tanner Soprosky yes, down there were. Um, in Winter Haven, Florida. But uh, Nolan Vertulo basically started every game at second base except for one game, but he is a solid overall hitter. He's a great fielder as well. Um, but this, this freshman class and Alec Engelmore and Aiden Williams, um, they have been really impressive so far, and they're going to be a key asset for this team in the future. Absolutely, and I'm very, very excited to get back on the diamond and see what both of these teams can do, especially baseball being a long season coming to the end. Uh, uh, you know, coming to the end after spring break, you, know, you get the sun out, you get – Get all of your warm-up in, and I'm very, very excited to keep going. Baseball takes on Wilson College this upcoming Friday to start see, to start play here in Pennsylvania. But when we come back, we still have to wrap up our winter sports. Men's basketball is up next with Spencer for Terry, and we return on Jacket Sports Weekly. You're watching WCTV, where we aim to bring you the best local coverage of what you care about most. Everything from local businesses to hometown sports and the latest weather. We're keeping up to date with what you need to know about issues that affect our campus and our community. We're telling the stories that matter, celebrating our past, our future, and our potential. So tune in for all the latest buzz right here on WCTV Channel 14, Waynesburg. Welcome back to Jacket Sports Weekly on WCTV. The men's basketball season has come to a close, but here to wrap it all up for us is our basketball analyst, Spencer Terry. Thank you so much for joining us, Spencer. And the men's basketball team took on W&J in the semifinal, semifinal round of the PAC tournament. They lost 66-61, to and uh, they got another shot to play another game in the EC, ECAC tournament um, back on Wednesday night against Juniata College. Yeah, so they originally thought they were done, and then they get this call, this opportunity almost. I know it was over their spring break. I know some of them weren't too happy about coming back, but they're on the team, so that's their duty. They come back. They get a chance to play at Juniata. It's a slow start to the game. It's a very slow game in general, guys. It wasn't your explosive high game. Obviously, Matt Popek out. He's been out. Kirkman, the only jacket in double digits. He had 15 points along with six rebounds, but it really wasn't your typical Waynesburg Yellow Jacket game from the from the men I mean it was a boring game to say the least Jansen Knotts and Bryson Wilt combined for 10 that's not even more than the top score for Kirkman and even for Juniata Nick Rigby only had 15 and Chase Husted only had 12 so just overall a, a very boring game especially for a game that's in the conference tournament now Spencer going on the opposite side of that probably the least non-boring game that they had so far is this W&J PAC loss uh, 66 to 61 in that one again without Matt Popek. Do you think you know in that stage in that like game time moment where Matt Popek I guess needed to be there? Do you think that would have changed things, or do you think it would have had the same result? I think Matt Popek being in that game changes the result 100%. I think it's almost a win. They only lose by five. You have John Tastinger stepping up and putting in 11 points. He's only a freshman. Popek averages around 20 points. I know he hasn't really been too well against W and J this season, but he scored 11 last time they played WJ. Just that 11 points alone would give them the points they needed to push back and push ahead of WJ. So, and it was a great game, a very solid game. Uh, Waynesburg was the underdog. I think we all thought that going into a WJ being the first seeded, the first ranked seeded team, excuse me, in the conference tournament, and these guys come in. Jake Sight drops 19. That's a career high. I mean, they just showed so much for next year that we might hope to see next year. Now the Yellow Jackets end their season at 14 and 14 overall, 9 and 9 in the conference, 500 in both respects. Um, and Spencer, looking at this general overall season, did they blow your expectations away? Did they underperform? What are your general thoughts about it? I was a little worried at first after they took their first loss, the first game of the season. But then after that, they really just changed up. They took two overtime wins, and their first eight games they were six and two. So it wasn't something that I expected. I honestly didn't expect them to be that good this year. But a lot of guys stepped up. Jansen Knotts really stepped up. Bryson Will. I'm um, Jansen Knotts is the main guy who stepped up this year. He's got a lot of promise. He will be the Matt Popek for the next two or three years to come at Waynesburg. So I think, and even without Matt Popek being out the rest of the season, I think when he went out, the team still played at that high level defensively, even with Popek out. And you would think with him being out. 
that changes things. Well, no, he goes out. This team still plays a great defensive game, and they keep moving forward in the tournament. And you talk about you know guys stepping up in that regard, and you look at the young guys, especially like John Tastinger, especially in that W and J game, going to the line a good bit, making seven of his three free throws. What do you see? And these promising young guys, especially on the defensive side, like you said, and Tim Fusina is definitely excited about that. Well, right, as you said, he's very excited. Uh, Waynesburg's a very defensive team, but John Tassinger has a ton of potential, not just him. Bryson Will, Jansen Nass, those are two big sophomores. I know I talk about this guy a lot, but I think, I think personally Anton Baker has a ton of potential. He's got the bounce, he's got the defensive capabilities, and whether people like to say it or not, he has those offensive capabilities. Yeah, he's not the greatest three-point shooter, He's not the greatest shooter in general, but he can create offense. He scored six in Juniata. He, he can be their good forward next year in the case where they don't get a center or they don't get someone else his size. But like you said, Josh, John Tastinger, Bryson Wilt, and Jansen Oss, those are the three big to come and look forward to for years to come at Waynesburg. Well, one last time, thank you so much, Spencer, for your analysis on the men's basketball team. And although the women's basketball team ended its season a little earlier than the men's team, we'll break it all down for you with Tyler Zeman next right here on Jacket Sports Weekly. Welcome back to Jacket Sports Weekly. I'm your co-host, Joe Benzel, and today we sit down with the women's basketball analyst, Tyler Zeman, joining us on Jacket Sports Weekly today. And Tyler, like we previewed before, they uh, ended their season pretty early in the PAC tournament nonetheless, but at WNJ, 77 to 45, Brooke Fuller in her final game as a Yellow Jacket, 18 points and 10 rebounds, a double-double, 10th double-double in the PAC, leading that, and Tyler, uh, you look at this game right now, and Brooke Fuller, 18 points, leading the charge, and her teammates, uh, Anika Dansby, 8 points on that respect. But what, what do you think they did wrong, especially on the offensive side of the ball? Well, I don't think there was much that they did wrong. Obviously, there was a lack of scoring behind Brooke Fuller. Obviously, you know, they need the other players like uh, Dansby, like Robinson, like Marley Wolf to step up uh, and produce uh, a lot more points than what they had uh, in that game against uh, WNJ, but I think really just the big thing it was how dominant WNJ have been. They dominated Waynesburg the two times they saw them in the regular season. They were pretty dominant uh, throughout, just in general against every team. And then obviously they went on to win the PAC title. So I think uh, when you look at a team like Waynesburg, who you you kind of expected them to beat Teal in the first round, they came into this game against WNJ. Um, I mean, maybe an upset, but just the way WJ really was playing come the end of the season, I think it was, you know, I think we all expected WJ to win. Maybe not in this large of a margin, but I certainly do think that we expected them to come out with a win. Now, the Lady Jackets finishing eighth in the conference standings, six and 20 overall, five and 13 in conference play. The biggest question marks are the future for the Lady Jackets. So, Mr. Zeman, in your crystal ball for the future, What's going to happen for the Lady Jackets? I mean, you hit it right on the head. I think that there is a lot of question marks surrounding this team. Obviously, you, know, you only lose two seniors, but uh, how big these seniors were for this team, I think, uh, is certainly going to be uh, something that we look at to the future. Uh, like you said, Joe, Brooke Fuller, one of the best players in the PAC, recorded 10 double-doubles this season. She was second in the league in scoring, averaging 16 points. She was first in rebounds, averaging almost 11 rebounds per game. Um, and she, she shot 47% from the field, which was uh, sixth best in the PAC. So I think offensively and defensively, you, you lose a very, very important player. And I think, you know, throughout this offseason, we're going to see uh, head coach Sam Jones really have to uh, focus on recruiting aspects. Maybe they find some players coming in who are looking to play uh, uh, their COVID year. Uh, transferring schools, but I think they're, if they can't, they're just going to have to keep recruiting uh, these freshmen because right now the team is very young. You know, you're looking forward, you say that this team is very young. What key 
factor? What key players do you see stepping up big time in the seasons to come? Well, I think you have to look at Avery Robinson, too, uh, to continue her success from shooting beyond the arc. She was a big player for the Lady Jays offensively, being able to stretch the floor uh, with her three-point shot. So I think you expect her to uh, you know, produce the similar numbers, if not better, next season. Uh, I think Marley Wolf, another sophomore, she's definitely going to have to step up and uh, put up more points than what she has this season. And I think uh, Anika Dansby, who will be a senior on this team next year, I think with her running the point for the Lady Jays, I think we're going to have to see her have a similar assist totals, and they're going to have to uh, not turn over the ball as much as she has uh, in the past. Mm. Bit bright future for this Lady Yellow Jackets team. From the hardwood to the diamond, we will take a look at Waynesburg University's softball team and what they did over spring break right here on Jacket Sports Weekly. It's a Saturday night. You know what that means. Time to party. Sam is having a good time watching sports, drinking beer, playing Pong. Not a care in the world for Sam. Nobody at the party stops Sam. They let him walk out the door with his keys even though he was stumbling having a hard time to stand up. What happened less than 10 minutes later would change Sam's life forever. Welcome back to Jacket Sports Weekly. And yes, the weather is breaking and baseball and softball are here. And Darian Allensworth, our softball analyst, is joining us on the panel today. And softball had a great time in Myrtle, going 6-3 and three overall. The first game against Castleton, 10-5, and five, ended in the third inning due to inclement weather. And Darian, overall, what did you see from the softball team heading down to Myrtle Beach? I mean, like you said, I mean, they should have they should have been seven and three if they didn't get yeah, rained out of that first game. I mean, they just, they looked really good. Um, they just played very well. Um, a lot of the freshman players, like this team is mostly freshmen, which is the crazy thing if you think about it. And they were just getting contributions from everyone. Um, I mean, Ella Brookman, Brent Hunter were their leading um, r runs in. Uh, both with seven, and that's a junior. In, in as uh, both of them are juniors. Um, or sorry, Ella Brookman's a sophomore, and Brynn is a junior. And they were just they were leading from example mostly. Um, their juniors and sophomores, but then their freshmen, both in the field as well as just getting these um, double double runs in single base hits. They were just incredible to watch. The thing about this softball team is last year they had a similar story where they started out really well, um, but then they finished the season losing 15 out of their last 16 games. What do they have to do to avoid that <laughs> this year? I mean, I, th I think the biggest thing is, especially in sports like this, is consistency. Um, there were games, like for the games that they won, there were only two blowouts. The rest of them were decided by single digits. And then in their three losses, they were blown out um, seven nothing to Shawnee State, which I mean they were 10-0 10 0 in N I N I A I um, in in their division, but and then their their other loss was to the University of Mary Washington, and that was a, that was a closer game than that. So I think it's consistency first and foremost. They have to be consistent, and it's it just gonna depends on who stays hot, um, both at the pitching mound as well as the um, batter's box for them. No, like I was just about to say, you know, you see what they can do hitting wise. I mean, eighteen to one against North of Vermont, but defensively, Darian, you you see a lot of promise on the pitching side and in the field. You know, what what do you see from the pitchers of the softball team? Yeah, so. I mean, I, I find it crazy that um, their freshman, Sydney Wilson, uh, she's a pitcher, she pitched the most innings out of, um, the, out of their pitchers, and they had three of them. The other two are sophomores uh, with 26. And then Kayla Gratton uh, pitched 14, and Ella Brookman 17. And um, I mean, in just in, in their, the opposition uh, pitching percentage, I mean, wise, they just they did very well in, in Myrtle. So. I think, like we said, consistency. If they can keep doing that, I don't see why they should at least uh, be over 500 by the time uh, the season wraps up. You know, and speaking of wrapping up, that's all the time that we have for softball. Moving from softball to baseball, we will invite Austin Beckhold to join us right here on Jacket Sports Weekly. Well, the softball team went to Myrtle Beach for their spring break trip, but the Waynesburg University baseball team went a little further south 
to the Russ Map Central Florida Invitational in Winter Haven, Florida. They went two and four overall on the trip. Could be controversial in terms of maybe they could have gone three and three, but regardless, we've got Austin Bechtold here to break down the baseball team's trip down to Florida. And Austin, this team had a really rough start, uh, especially the first two games, but they kind of got back on the right track. They did, Caleb. Good to be with you guys. Team was outscored 33 to five in those first two games, Caleb. Obviously not how you want to start out the tournament, but really how you're able to finish it is, I think, how the Yellow Jackets are going to really be able to move forward with the rest of the season and try to be able to take away some positives, especially being able to win 4-2 to two over Wartburg to be able to bounce back. And that was a team that they lost to earlier on in the tournament, 14-1. to one. So to be able to have that bounce back against a team that really smoked you earlier on in the tournament, it's seven innings that game being having to be called short. So I think that just for this team, it's, it's early on, you're under a new head coach, just trying to be able to build some positive momentum before you get into obviously PAC play. You know, you look at sunny, beautiful Florida down in Whitehaven there, and you, you see these uh, upcoming baseball stars, especially the young baseball stars on this freshman team, especially Tyler Inglewood in that respect. But Austin, you look at the bright side of this trip and you look at the wins against Concordia College 10 to 1 and the, the win against Wartburg, the revenge game in that respect. You know, what, you, what bright sides did you see from this trip? Well, I saw just a lot of good things somewhat from the pitchers. We saw Aiden Williams as a freshman start to really step up and start to emerge himself. Uh, Brandon Durbin also played ball. He was four for six with two RBIs against Calvin in the eight to seven. Uh, loss in 12 innings, but he's hitting 364 so far this season, and it is a limited sample size. We, we got to admit that, but also to be able to have that type of batting average so far, when usually you're going to be somewhere around maybe in the maybe in the 200 batting average area near the Mendoza line, because of the sample size is really short, and you know you haven't played in a while, and the stipulations that you had over the season last year, and baseball's more so of a mental game, I would say, than any other game that there is. And it's a it's a game really where you're expected to fail seven out of ten times at least, uh, with a 300 batting average being something that you like to see. But we saw some great things from Corey Fisher, especially on the mound, and Chris Lee as well, also performing well with the bat. And for Perry Cunningham, just being able to get off to a good start and 14 years with the program before being named as head coach. This is really a year where, obviously, when you start out with a new head coach, even though Cunningham has been around the team, still a fresh face, still a new leader of a voice for the, the head coach for the Yellow Jackets. And overall, for this team, being able to go down to Florida, always a good thing for spring break. And Caleb, you were there to be able to take in all the action with Tanner Soprowski. Mm -hmm. I mean, this team, it really just depends. It's going to depend on the day for them because – one day they lose 19 to four to Dubuque, but the you know, and then the next day they lose uh, 14 to one against Wartburg. But then they turn things around and beat Concordia 10 to one. Um, it's really just going to depend day to day, like I said. Uh, but this team is very, very young, to say the least. A lot of freshmen, a lot of sophomores. I mean, the Nolan Petrullo is a really impressive second baseman. He's only he's he's only a sophomore. Um, but the thing is, I mean, this team it really is going to depend on the day. And uh, the pitching is going to be a little bit of a struggle for them, I think. Um, Joe Sablek is going to be their ace along with Corey Fisher, um, who got a save and a win, like you mentioned. Um, but it's really just going to depend on, you know, who is going to be pitching that day and who, um, you know, down the stretch, down later in the season, how they're going to perform, especially when they're tired. Well, that's going to do it for our baseball team coverage. Thank you very much, Austin. But when we come back, Perry Cunningham will sit down with Tanner Soprowski for a little interview right here on Jacket Sports Weekly. Back on Jacket Sports Weekly, I'm Terrence Soprowski, and today I'm joined by first-year baseball head coach Perry Cunningham. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. And to start it off, you spent the last 14 years as the assistant slash the pitching coach for this team. So what kind of adjustments have you had to make turning over to being the head coach of this team? Yeah, I think that when you're the pitching coach or you're any positional specific coach, you know, you just have a small portion of the roster to worry about. And now 
there's a lot more that goes into just coaching one group of players. Uh, not only do I feel responsible for the entire roster, but then there's all the organizational things. Um, you know, in addition to just you know, planning for Florida, but now we have all the the, the behind the scene things that happen. You know, pretty much day in and day out moving forward. So, not something that I've done before, but uh, something that I'm adjusting to. And you have more control over the team uh, this year, obviously, like you mentioned. What are you most excited about or looking forward to the most about being the head coach here at Waynesburg? I think just the opportunity to put my own stamp on it. Um, you know, there's, there's certain things, I think, with given my experience, given my, my history, that um, I have a different outlook and a different perspective on certain things in our game. Uh, and, again, when you're an assistant coach, you, you kind of stay in your lane. You, 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 you focus on, again, that group of players. Now, I will say that Coach Humiston allowed me to kind of put my own stamp on just the pitchers. But that being said, I've, I've been able to implement some things moving forward that, again, just try to – change our direction a little bit as far as what our guys that have been been here for a while what they're used to seeing whether it be during practice or, or in the games and you've had a successful playing career uh, Davis and Elkins College and and professionally in the Frontier League so what are some things you learned in your playing career that you want to implement to this team at Waynesburg um, I've always tried to be a pretty even keel coach I try to be an even keel person and uh, you know I think that's the culture of professional baseball there's not the yelling and the screaming coach and the degrading coach because uh, it's a little bit different at that level where if you're not good enough they'll just get rid of you and I'm not suggesting it's that it, that's the the philosophy here but I do think that you can kind of get your point across and you can still mold young men uh, without being the yeller or the screamer or the degrader and going off of that I had thankfully I was able to make the trip down to Florida uh, with you guys to broadcast the games and two things that I noticed especially was it's kind of the professionalism from the team, the, the one tweet about the team going to Chipotle and how, um, how nice and polite the team was. And then after, whenever we went to McDonald's that one night, we, the whole team walked by and thanked all the workers. How important is that off-field stuff to you? To me, it's, you know, it's just as important as on the field, if not more. Um, you know, ultimately, what we're trying to do is we're trying to mold. I, I always say, even going back to my pitching coach days, there's nothing more fulfilling than seeing an 18-year-old college freshman that comes in, works, develops, grows in all aspects of their life, and then leaves campus ready to tackle the world. And so um, if we act a certain way um, in life, then hopefully, you know, our, as a team, then those, um, those characteristics will carry forward to our guys individually in the real world. And in that trip to Florida, the team went two and four possibly could have went three and three that controversial call versus Calvin but what were your initial thoughts about the team's performance you know I think it's kind of twofold I mean if 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 you would have told me we would be two and four coming back from Florida I would have probably told you I, I would be disappointed in that I, I felt like talent wise we have a much better team than two and four with that being said you know, looking at it through the prism of early in the season still have a lot of freshmen and sophomores in the lineup uh, who you're competing against, and you know, one of the things that I ask the uh, the Russ Matt Florida guys is to pair us with teams that, while a lot of the records were similar to ours last year, uh, some of those programs, Wartburg in particular, I think they've been in the World Series several years ago. So, uh, you know, they they tr they're traditionally strong programs. Um, so seeing how we competed against those teams, I was pleasantly. I shouldn't say surprised, but I mean, I was happy. Again, we maybe we didn't get the outcome, but I felt like we go to Florida uh, trying to figure out some different things about our roster, seeing guys in different situations, and, and ultimately we were able to accomplish that goal. And you did mention the young the young players for your team, uh, sophomores like Nolan Vertulo, Mike Bell, Justin Clevenger. And in Florida, we saw a lot of freshmen, Alec Inglemore and Aiden Williams. So how big of a role do you think these this young core of players is going to play for this team this season um i don't you know there's no reason to, to think that what we saw in florida isn't going to really be how our season plays out uh, you know not to say that some of the other guys won't get opportunities because they will but uh, you know all in all those guys especially those younger guys stuck out for uh, to us as coaching staff for a reason and so uh, many of them didn't do anything um, in florida that suggest otherwise for us and so uh, you know I would expect to see those guys to be big contributors in the lineup moving forward. And you can't talk about Waynesburg baseball this season without talking about uh, one person in particular and that being 
that being Corey Fisher. He got his first start on Tuesday, pitched extremely well versus Concordia, got that save on Saturday. So what can you say about him that people might not know or that they mm-hmm. should know about Corey? Um, you know, first I'd say that, uh, and I told this to somebody else, I, I didn't, they asked me what my expectations were, and I just said I don't, I don't know what my expectations were, but whatever they were, I, I wasn't expecting what, what we saw. Um, so, you know, but how you saw Corey Pitts and the fact that he fought, you know, almost literally, I'll say, uh, the passion that he brings to, to the field, that's the same passion that I know that he's, you know, taking to his medical fight right now. And so uh, I don't have any doubt that he's going to, you know, be victorious in his medical fight. But in the meantime, too, I mean, let's face it, he's a returning pitcher of the year as a, as a team. And so um, now that we have a little bit of a better idea maybe what what we can get from him I think again as a coaching staff he was a question mark before the season but now if we could plug him in in certain situations and a certain role for us I think that just makes our team that much better Um, and last question before we wrap up Uh, Florida trips over back in Pennsylvania first doubleheaders this Friday versus Wilson PAC play starts on the 22nd Mm-hmm. So just simply, what are your expectations for this team for the rest of the season? I think our expectations are just to keep growing. And, you know, part of what we wanted to use Florida for was to give our guys an opportunity to get their feet wet, get their feet underneath of them, uh, get their timing offensively, you know, get some reps in the field defensively. But, you know, coming up north now, we're going to play in a lot, turf, a lot of turf fields. So maybe some of those balls that we kicked around, uh, you know, we feel better that they would be outs. But with that being said, um, our expectations are, are pretty simple is that we just want to win. Uh, if we're talking about baseball in the field, then our expectations are, are to win and make the postseason tournament and you know, then see what happens from there. Definitely a positive outlook for the baseball team this season. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have. Thank you again for joining mm-hmm. me for the interview today. And thank all of you for watching Jacket Sports Weekly. Come back next week for a new episode right here on WCTV.